Today I'm doing a video on what plants are best suited to arid setups or dry setups. Just like my previous video on how to pick plants for a humid setup, a lot of the information from this video comes from the file section of reptile and amphibian bioactive setups on Facebook. I urge anyone who's going to be planning to do a bioactive over the next while to go to that Facebook page and even just join it so you can see what everyone else has made because it's great for inspiration on the different layouts and setups that you can make yourself. Special thanks in this video to Ron Eddy who wrote the file on toxic and non-toxic plants for reptiles. The first plant I'm going to talk about is aloe. Aloe is a succulent plant species of the genus aloe. The plant has thick, green, fleshy leaves that contain a bitter tasting but harmless chemical called aloin. This chemical discourages herbivores from eating it, which makes it a very useful plant for arid tortoise and lizard enclosures. Aloe prefer bright, indirect sunlight, so make sure to keep them in a place where they're not going to be overexposed to sunlight because it can bleach their colours. Geraniums are also useful for vivarium. They have a strong smell and taste that tend to discourage plant-eating lizards and tortoises, just like the aloe. They do best in temperatures of between 18 and 21 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 65 to 70 Fahrenheit. They prefer bright, indirect sunlight, and when given enough light, they tend to flower this lovely bright red flower, so they look great inside a vivarium. Hawworthia care, no matter the species, is always easy and minimal. These small succulents come in many different species, and similar to aloe, they are very useful in dry setups. They prefer temperatures of 21 to 32 degrees Celsius, which is between 70 and 90 Fahrenheit. These different species come in a variety of sizes and shapes, so make sure to look at all the different kinds before you decide on which one you want. Hens and chickens is probably my favourite on the list, just because its idea is completely adorable. Hens and chickens is a rosette-shaped succulent that can be used very similarly to both the Haworthia and the aloe. It composes of one parent or mother plant, and then she has little chicks which grow around her. So each year she'll have a minimum of four of these smaller plants spring up around her from the roots. If you want, you're able to remove these smaller plants and then plant them separately, where they will then grow up to become the mother chicken and they will have their own little chicks. The foliage comes in many different colours, typically red, green, blue, gold, copper, or a mixture of all of the above. They prefer full sunlight or partial shade. Jasmine is another good plant for arid setups. Jasmine is a vigorous climber in warm and dry-ish conditions, so it can be very good for a back wall or some branches to have something climbing on them, along with the fact that it smells really, really good. These often have little flowers on them, and they can come in a variety of colours, including white and pink. Mimosa is a very interesting plant. It is also known as the sensitive plant, due to the fact that it can close up its leaves when in danger. These leaves are very sensitive, so if you were to reach out your hand and gently stroke one of the leaves, they would all close up one after the other to try and prevent herbivores from being able to eat them. If you get the chance, I do recommend looking up videos of Mimosa doing this because I just find it so fascinating and unfortunately I could not get a video to put in here of the plant closing up. There's just something so interesting about the fact that it closes up so quickly. It's like it's like my childhood wonder at Venus flytraps and the way they'd eat flies. It was it's just it's such an interesting plant. Mimosa does extremely well with very little water and too much water will actually kill it, so it's perfect for an arid setup. If it likes the conditions it's being kept in, it'll produce pink, fluffy flower heads. The Radar Makira, I'm hoping it's pronounced, also known as the China Doll plant, is a small, bright green tree. They need plenty of bright, indirect sunlight to properly grow. The main downside of this plant is they are very fussy about the temperatures that they live in. They prefer to be in temperatures of 18 to 24 degrees Celsius, which is 65 to 75 Fahrenheit. So if you've got a vivarium that's set to a temperature above that, they're not going to do too well. You have to be very careful not to overwater this plant, as it does not like this and can develop root rot if left sitting in water due to poor drainage. Spider plants are very common house plants, so very easy to source. Spider plants grow distinctive flower stems, which develop into plantlets. Because of this, they can be planted on the ground, in a flower pot, 
or in a hanging basket or even a hollow log in the bioactive setup. When planted, they reach out these flower stems to develop new plants and you can cut them off and replant them in different places if you want. They're basically a plant that keeps on giving because you're going to constantly have more little plants as long as you keep the conditions correct. I particularly like these plants for ground space because it just looks like grass. So they're very grass-like and it makes it just look more naturalistic even though it's an already naturalistic tank. It just lends to it and makes it even better. The asparagus fern is not a fern at all actually despite its appearance. This genus is a very tough one surviving a wide range of soil types, light levels, humidities and temperatures as well as being jumped on by various animals. They prefer bright, indirect sunlight, as direct sunlight may scorch their needles and insufficient sunlight may turn them yellow and cause them to drop off. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope it was useful for anyone who's going to be doing an arid setup. Special thanks again to Reptile and Amphibian Bioactive Setups on Facebook, and specifically to Ron Eddy who did the file on safe versus toxic reptile plants. I've put a link to the Facebook group in the description below and I really, really encourage you to check it out. Thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in looking at plants that are suitable for a humid setup, I've done a video on that as well. So check that one out. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.